A key component of the 2025 MotoGP rider market puzzle was Fabio Quattararo's future, although he recently agreed to a new two-year contract with Yamaha. Yamaha's choice to remain put was motivated by a number of factors, which may come as a surprise given his poor performance. Fabio Quattararo had to make a decision on whether to go down a more long-term and lucrative road or to become competitive once more before opting to extend his contract with Yamaha, an announcement made on Friday. The Frenchman is now the highest paid rider on the MotoGP grid, but it might be extremely tough for him to get back to winning ways before the end of his current contract due to Yamaha's lack of improvement. The performance curve of the Yamaha fueled by Quattararo has been on a sharp decline since the championship was won in 2021, and it can only be compared to the other Japanese manufacturer competing in the competition. Since Marc Marquez was exhausted and chose not to accept his rights to the $20 million at the end of his contract, Honda were forced to let him go at the end of the previous season. Marquez made the decision to take a chance into the unknown and joined Grassini Racing, a satellite team using a Ducati that isn't the most recent model on the market. The Spaniard took that path in order to enjoy being competitive again, as he stated it before, then, and still to say now. With its many limitations, such as a lack of traction and no indication of the bike's primary historical strength in handling, Quattararo hasn't had much fun on the M1 in recent months. Quattararo completed his last renewal in June 2022 as the reigning MotoGP champion during a season in which he battled to keep the title until the final race of the season. During that time, his bike was competitive, winning three races and a total of podiums, a grim contrast to the current form of the M1. Last year, it only accomplished the Grand Prix podiums in three races. With the third positions, Quattararo earned himself in Austin India and Indonesia, as well to his third place in the Asen Sprint Race. Despite knowing that his bike is not competitive now and probably won't be for the duration of his new contract which was signed two weeks ago, Quattararo has committed to it. The new deal runs through 2025 to 2026. The number 20 rider was behind Jorga Martin's pole time by 1.2 seconds in the season opening race in Qatar. In the sprint race, he placed 12th, about 12 seconds behind winner Martin. In the race on Sunday, he was nearly 18 seconds behind 11th place Ducati GP24 rider Francesco Bagnaia. Quartararo started 6th on the grid in Portugal, just 6 tenths behind pole sitter Enea Bastianini on a very dirty track conditions that prevent Ducati from fully using its legion of the Ducatis. He placed ninth in the sprint on Saturday, 7.5 seconds behind Maverick Vinales, and seventh on Sunday, 20 seconds behind Martin. Even with Yamaha undergoing an internal revolution with the hiring of Massimo Bartolini as its new technical head, the rescue effort will take time. On most circuits, under normal circumstances, the difference between the Yamaha and the European bikes is more than eight tenths of a second each lap. Closing this gap is not a task that can be completed in two years, given the current circumstances and the stability of the technological regulations in place until 2027, and that is assuming the right thing is done. The move can take much longer if Yamaha doesn't get it right. This makes it almost clear that Quattararo won't have the opportunity to challenge for the title in the near future. The importance of the communication carried to his factory will start to mount at this time. Since Yamaha introduced me to MotoGP, they have the upper hand. In a detailed and open conversation with Autosport in August of last year, Quattararo stated, Yamaha has been promising me things in a 10-page PDF document for three years, nine and a half of which are not fulfilled. I trust the brand and I gave it a chance, but there won't be a second chance. Regardless of the technical guarantees that the team now led by Bartolini may have given him, the other great asset of Lynn Jarvis's management has been the checkbook. With performance bonuses excluded, Banaya's base income at Ducati has more than doubled by the approximately $12 million in the new contract. Quattararo is the highest paid rider on the grid, and the Italian would not match that amount even if he were to win his third straight championship. Remaining in his existing surroundings was the only option available to Quattararo, and all of them would have required him to drastically cut back on his income. The most reliable of them all was Aprilia, who had been in touch with him in the past few months. 
Massimo Rivola, the CEO of the racing division said, what we want are riders who are committed to our project. We know that we have a bike capable of fighting for the world championship. The racing division of the Piaggio group has a bike, but not enough money to fight Yamaha in such an arm wrestle. Many examples show how the RSGP has grown in recent years. Vinales won in the sprint on Saturday and just missed a podium finish on Sunday due to a gearbox issue, which left him just short of the finish line over the last lap in Portugal. As a result of restructuring and modernizing its internal processes and work environments, Aprilia is now one of the paddock's most creative and innovative teams. It's even comparable to Ducati in certain places. Besides, their bid was for less than a third of what Yamaha had paid to keep Quattararo. It was barely more than $4 million. Had the Aprilia agreement already resulted in a pay cut for him, there would have been comparable choices. For the few available positions at Ducati, there is an evident funnel with Martin, Marquez, and the rest of the current lineup. Quartararo would have had to go through a satellite team in order to board a Ducati, with the obvious financial and status disadvantage that this would have entailed. The situation at KTM was not all that different from Ducati's, particularly following Pedro Acosta's spectacular entrance, around whom the Austrian group is already circling and around whom his future is sure. When considering the hole that Tokyo-based brands find themselves in, signing for Honda appeared even less rational than it did for Ducati and KTM. With one exception, it is exactly as deep as the one Yamaha finds itself in. Honda continues to exist just in its own world, after failing to get the necessary results thus far. When trying to replicate Fabio Quartararo's setup, Alex Rins believes he needs to do something different in order to speed up his adjustment to Yamaha's MotoGP bike. The 28-year-old believes that in order to better understand the 2024 spec M1, he must now go in a new path after using Quattararo's setup as a baseline thus far. It was a challenging race, he remarked after his first Yamaha point. I wasn't expecting the results of these two races in Qatar and Portimao. A little more work needs to be done by us separately. We made a few minor adjustments to the bike while essentially sticking to Fabio's setup. I had similar issues to the race in Qatar, so after this race, I realized I needed to change the way I rode the bike. I was having a lot of trouble with the front after letting off the brakes and applying the power. I am having trouble turning. I could not make the lean angle. It's more setup than my position on the bike, he added. I tried changing my riding technique halfway through the race to see if I could lock more of the front wheel, but it was not. It appears that additional weight on the front is necessary to turn the bike. Yamaha held a private test at Portimao on Monday after the race in an attempt to close the championship gap between Japanese and European markets by using the new concessions system that is being used in 2024. However, hardly much useful running was possible due to dirty track conditions. What are your thoughts? Made Fabio Quartararo the right decision to extend his contract with the Japanese manufacturer? Let us know in the comments down below and don't forget to like and subscribe for new upcoming videos. Thanks for watching.